my friends, it's another math video. Yes, I'm so excited. Actually, you know, I haven't done a video in a little while, so I get kind of pumped, you know, and it's like, yeah, we're still doing fourth grade, my friends, and we're, as you can see, we're in chapter four, and we're coming up on 4.9. Yes, lesson 4.9. My friends, we've been doing a lot of work with division. This whole chapter's been about dividing one-digit numbers, so let's go ahead and take a look at our topic today. Our topic says, model division with regrouping. Okay, I like it. And it says our essential question. Our essential question is key, helps us understand what our purpose is of this lesson. And it states, how can you use base 10 blocks to model division with regrouping? Okay, cool. So we're gonna be using some base 10 blocks, as you can see. This is a investigate. It is, it's got that hands on, right? Those purple hands, woohoo! Which means I'm gonna be pulling out some virtual manipulatives. That's right. You guys, hopefully, if you have some in your class, you can see materials are listed as base 10 blocks. Let's go ahead and get started with our problem. It does say the librarian wants to share 54 books equally among three classes. How many books will she give to each class? It's been a long time since I actually learned this stuff when I was probably a fourth grader like yourselves. And sometimes, you know, these word problems they get confusing, right? You know, it's really easy if you're just given a problem like, hey, take this number, multiply it with that number, or take this number, divide it by another number, and we can kind of memorize that algorithm. But when it comes to word problems, we have to have some strategies on how we're going to solve the problem. And when I look at this problem, I think to myself, first thing is, what is the problem asking me to do? What does it want me to find out? And it says here, how many books will she give to each class? But interestingly, if you look at the word problem, there's only one sentence. It says, the librarian wants to share 54 books equally among three classes. And equally among three classes is kind of suggesting that we want to make sure that each class has the same number of books. And when you get those kinds of words in the problem, it kind of lets you know that, hey, I need to divide. I need to take my 54 and I need to divide. Well, GoMath is so good about doing this step by step. So let's take a look at A. It states, draw three circles to represent the classes. Then use base 10 blocks to model 54. Show 54 as five tens and four ones. I'm gonna hold, grab my nice little palette I've already created here for you guys. And you see here, this could take up the whole screen. No! Ah! Okay, we'll make you a little bit smaller, but hey, we're gonna bring you in in just a little bit of time. Because it says something first that we need to do, we need to use base 10 blocks to model 54. Okay, well, let's take a look down below. You can see I have my 54, one, two, three, four, five tens, as it suggested, and my four ones. Uh, ignore these, these are my little infant cloners. They can make a lot of different, see? Look at that, make another one. See, that's all that is, okay? So I have 54, now to share the tens equally among three groups. Ooh, this could get tricky. Okay, I won't be able to see my, I, I can always move him. Okay, so share three tens. So there's one ten. Ooh, it barely fits in there. Two ten. I'm sorry, yeah, there's two tens. One for each one. Okay, now it says if C says if there are any tens left, regroup them as ones. Share the ones equally among three groups. I actually can see that I have ten and I have 20 ones. So I'm just gonna count out 20 ones. I still have these four. So I think what would be better, I think I'm gonna do this instead. I'm gonna have my two tens up here so I can ignore this here. I can get rid of these two. Goodbye, see you later. And then these four I can put up here because I already had these four. So I'm gonna go ahead and take 20 and start moving one by one. And I'm just gonna count them out as I go. So I have one, two, three, Okay, there's 18, so I was able to get six ones in each circle, so I still have two more, but I happen to have four here. Remember, those are my, from my 54, so I have four, plus I have two more, make six. So I can actually get two more in each box. Let's go ahead and do these four first, not forgetting that I still have two more. There's two, three, here's my fourth one, but I still need to get one in each one of these, and since I did have two left over from the, the 20, uh, the two tens, I only used 18 of them. So now you can see I have two, four, six, eight. 
two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, and they each have a 10. And this is crucial because we're talking about division. And so we need to make sure that we break up that 54, the books equally for each class. Now down below it says there are how many tens and blank how many ones in each group. So there's one 10 and there are eight ones, okay, in each group. So the librarian will give 18 books to each class. Okay, uh, I think that made some sense for me. Yeah, well, I like that using the old hands on. Let's move on down here where we're going to be drawing conclusions. And here it looks like, oh, wait, math board, math board, get your math board. That's right. If you have a math board, grab that one. And probably, yeah, you're going to need a marker as well. It says we're going to think smarter. I like that. Is it can explain why you needed to regroup in step C? Well, I think that maybe seems to me the easiest way to explain this would be just the simple fact is that I needed to regroup in step C because I only remember I only had two tens and I couldn't share the two tens equally with the three classrooms. So that's how what I would say. So I needed to regroup in step C because I only had two tens and I wasn't able to share them. Key word here, equally. And you know what I'm going to do? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to put this in quotation marks just to emphasize that, to share equally with three classes. It forced me having to take that 10 and make 21s. That says, how can you use base 10 blocks to find the quotient of 92 divided by 4? I could model, just like what we did above, I could model 92 as 9 tens and 4 ones. Then I could share the 9 tens with the four groups. Now you can see by sharing 9 tens with four groups, I'm going to end up with one 10 left over. Therefore, I could regroup my one 10 into 10 ones. Now I'll have, I'll have my four ones and my 10 ones, so I'm going to have my 14 ones. So with 14 ones, you can see with four groups, now I can take my, oh, if I took my 10 ones and out of my four ones, I would get 14 with four groups. Hmm, that, that's not going to come out very nice. And oh, oh, no. Ah, I made a mistake up here. Oh, no. Call the math police. Yes, Mr. Warren made an error. Let's fix that. The four ones should be two ones. There you go. It was like it was never there. Okay. I had four in my mind, I suppose, probably because I was looking at the divisor here and it kind of threw me off. So now that would make sense because I have my 10 ones plus my two ones is 12 ones and you could divide 12 by four. And that means three will go into each group. So I'm going to say now I will share the 12 ones, not the 14. Boy, here, that W was kind of bothering me. I had to fix it. I will share the 12 ones with the, oops, really? What are you going to spell? Wither? Come on, Mr. Wara. Okay, fix it. Here we go. I'm back. So we'll share the 12 ones with the four groups. I will share the 12 ones with the four groups, which means each group will get three ones. Okay. So far, so good. Let me check my work here. I could model 92 as nine tens and two ones. Then I could share the nine tens with the four groups. Therefore, I could, and I kind of added, I probably could have put another sentence in here, but I kind of said it out loud. Therefore, because I would have one 10 left over, therefore I could regroup my one 10 into 10 ones. Now I will share the 12 ones with the four groups, because I'm adding that two ones that we already had, with the four groups, which means each group will get three ones. Okay, finally, I'm at the end here. Finally, each group should have received, we had two 10s and, was it three ones? And three ones. Well, if that's true, and Mr. Wara hopes so, then that would mean 23 times we had four groups should equal 92. 12, carry the one, eight. There we go. Woo-hoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a problem. Woo! It's time to make connections. We're going to make some connections. It says use the quick picture at the bottom of the page to help you divide. Record each step. Okay, it says find 76 divided by three. Model 76 as seven tens, six ones. Draw three circles to represent equal groups. Oh yeah, because we're, the divisor's letting us know that. So we'll do three circles. Okay, we'll just kind of do it my way here. 
dun, 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 nothing really fancy, kind of like what you guys would probably be doing at home. And I'm just going to use my 10 as just a single line and then just a dot. Okay, and I think that's kind of like what they use. I think that's what they mean by here, the quick picture. So if I have seven tens, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, problem, right? Now I have six, I've used six tens, but I still have one 10 left over. That's kind of a problem. So we're gonna have to regroup him, right? That's my one 10. And then we're just gonna regroup him into, that's right, 10 ones. I have three, two, four, six, eight. 10, there we go, two, four, six, eight, 10. So I have 10 ones now, but remember I already had six ones. So now I have six over here, so I have 16. Is that correct? I believe so, except, oh, you know what? I'm trying to do like the whole problem here. What does step two say? Maybe I should kind of keep going on. Share the seven tens equally among the three groups. Yes, cross out the tens you use. Okay, I didn't quite do it that way, but I get the idea. There are how many tens in each group? Well, there's two. And tens in each group, two goes up above here. Okay, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because seven is the 70. So three times two, six, we got two, four, six of them, all right? And then it says blank tens were used. How many tens were used? Six of them. So there is one 10 left over. Tens used, uh, we used six of them. So we're gonna subtract that and we're gonna get 10 left over, just one, okay. So we're gonna make sure we keep following this step by step. You don't know how many times Mr. Ward just starts working on a problem and I just kind of keep on going and I'm like, oh, wait a second, I'm supposed to follow the steps. Now I said 110 cannot be shared among three groups. Can't do it unless we regroup. Regroup 110 by drawing 10 ones. And you were seeing me do that up above, like that was like my 10. And I was kind of showing like the line down below is the same as just simply showing that as 10 ones. Not a big deal, All right? Probably learned that like in second grade. So now it says, now there are how many ones to share? I have that one, but don't forget, I, I still had the six over here. We haven't even used those yet from the 76. So first let's bring this down. One, that's the subtraction there. And now I bring my six down. Aha, see, 16 ones to share. That's why I was trying to add on my six. Ooh, cool. And then step four says, now share the ones equally among the three groups. Cross out the ones you use. Okay, well there are, and I'm gonna just determine that three, if I had my three circles again, I don't wanna get you guys lost here, but if I had my three circles, I just know there's 16 of them. So rather than put all my dots and crossing them out, I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, oh, we're gonna, I was running out of room. Good thing that worked out. So I have five in each group. You see five times three is 15. If I have one left over, I can't share that equally. So there are five ones in each group. I used 15 ones and there is one left over. So now up here, ones in each group, five. And of course, three times five is 15. And now I have my one left over. Whoo, what a doozy. But I like that. You know what? They they do a really good job, you know, going step by step here. I kind of like that. Okay, let's look at the bottom here. There are three groups of blank and blank left over. So there are three groups of five and one left over. So for 76 divided by three, the quotient is 25. And we had a remainder of one. This can be written as, what do they want? Do they want this as 25? remainder one, I'm assuming that's what they want there. It can be written as that, because technically, you want to take a peep, want to take a quick look into the future? Sure, Mr. Warren, because actually, the way that it can be written is 25. The remainder was one, that becomes your numerator, and then the divisor we used was three. So that actually becomes 25. And one. Sure, but don't worry about that right now, because that's that fourth grade. Mr. Wara, are you trying to confuse our fourth graders? No, not really. So ignore that whole part. This is so simple, because I know you guys can write 25 as your quotient with your remainder one. So, what? Uh, sorry, someone's talking to my earpiece. Uh-huh. Oh, really? I'm like, keep it. The sound crew's like, Mr. Wara, you're way over. It's time to end this video. No! I guess they had the music going there for a while. I was oblivious. I had no idea. Well, well, my friends, 4.9 is gone. It's over. <laughs> but you know what? I got all to say. There's another video right around the corner. My friends, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I appreciate you guys checking out my math videos. Hey, if you're not a sub, become a sub. Be part of this really awesome team. 
That's right, because it's all of you guys making this happen for me. And I'm so grateful that you check out my channel. Now, live long and prosper.